Welcome to this information session on the Data Availability and Transparency Act scheme. Um, my name is Felicity Flack and I'm the Manager of Policy and Client Services at the PHRN. I'm speaking to you from the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation and I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of all the lands we're meeting on today and pay my respects to Elders past and present. The DAT Act may have a significant impact on the work that we all do, so we're very keen for everybody to have the opportunity to access the information they need to better understand the scheme. So today I'm delighted to have Simon Gallant, Senior Advisor at the Office of the National Data Commissioner, uh, who has kindly agreed to give an overview of the scheme and answer any questions that you might have. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A box at any time during the presentation, and then we'll take the questions at the end. So I'll hand over to Simon now, and we'll come back for questions later. Thanks, Felicity. Hello, everyone. Nice to be with you today. Um, I'm coming to you from the normal country today, and I'm joined by my colleague, Fiona Ross Childs. Uh, so I will just share my screen and we will get into it. I've got a presentation that will take us about 15 to 20 minutes to get through. And then there will be plenty of time for questions. Felicity, can I just check that that's all working properly? All good. Excellent. I will get started then. So, Thank you again for coming. Um, today, I'm going to run through a fairly uh, brief presentation on how the scheme works and how we're supporting data sharing through our platform called DataPlace, which will include some information on becoming an accredited user under the scheme. I'll give a bit of a brief overview on what the Office of the National Data Commissioner is here to do, as well as running through the function of the scheme itself uh, and then I'll, I'll provide some information towards the end on how we can provide support to your organizations and uh, ensure that you can be part of the scheme if that's what you choose to be and then as Felicity said plenty of time for some questions and discussion uh, after this. So Office of the National Data Commissioner exists to be the national educator and regulator for the sharing of Australian government data under this scheme. Australian government data is defined as data that is held by an, uh, Australian government agencies where those agencies have a right to deal with that data. Right to deal with is a, a fairly complex legal concept that includes things like intellectual property rights and copyright, um, uh, as well as the legal right to make decisions about data. So just because an agency has data doesn't mean it has the right to deal with that data. And in fact, there are some cases where an agency has the right to deal with data, but isn't the holder of the data. So the, the Australian government data that we are regulating and that is able to be shared under the data scheme is quite ranging, wide ranging and uh, quite deep in some places. And the ONDC is here to support the sharing of that data where that delivers a public benefit. We're also here to help build data sharing capability across the public service. We know that data sharing is something that happens well in pockets across the APS, but is not necessarily something that can be expected to be good in all parts of all agencies. And ONDC has a role in improving that. Obviously, ONDC is here to be an effective and efficient regulator and educator. We need this scheme to work well for a variety of purposes, all of which are benefiting the public. And we need to make sure that we're doing that in the most effective and efficient way that is possible. Finally, we are here to build trust and transparency in data sharing more broadly. We know that over the past 10 years, there have been, there's been a degradation of trust in government use of data from the public. And we believe that there are a large number of good things that can be done with data by government and uh, with government data by the non-government sector, including universities and private sector. But that has to be done in the right way and for the right reasons and communicated 
transparently to build that trust back up. So the big part of what we're here to do is to, to unlock those assets that are our nationally owned data. I mentioned before there, there are a few barriers to data sharing by government. Um, some are around culture, some are around legislative barriers, and some are around the complexity of existing data sharing agreements. Many of you who have worked with government in receiving data held by government agencies will know how long those agreements can take to negotiate and how complex they can be legally. And can also probably understand um, what we say when we uh, refer to a culture of caution around data sharing. The, the research that was done a few years ago about Australian government data sharing showed that usually the position taken by agencies was we need to justify why data should be shared. And we believe that the improved data capability culture and culture for best practice data sharing would be to reverse that and say, the burden has to be, why should that data not be shared? We, we share by default and we um, protect the data where it needs to be protected, but we the, the decision should be, yes, we will share that data. What controls do we need to put in place to make sure that's safe? One of the critical parts of the data scheme that ONDC is the regulator of is an override provision in the Data Availability and Transparency Act, which allows Australian government agencies to share data that they have the right to deal with, where that would be uh, counter to some other piece of legislation. So if there's a, a secrecy provision in an existing piece of legislation, the Data Availability and Transparency Act can override that secrecy provision where the right safeguards are in place and where it's in the public interest. When we say in the public interest, there are three purposes for which data can be shared under this scheme. Those are in that blue box on the right, improving government service delivery, informing government policy development and program design, and supporting research and development for public benefit. That supporting research and development for public benefit purpose does not have to be government research and development. That can be industry or university research and development where the public benefit is clearly articulated and where the right safeguards are put in place to make sure the data is not misused. This page shows the entire scheme on a single page and it is very complex um, in how the scheme safeguards are articulated. But I will spend about five minutes running through this page to give you a bit of an overview on how this game operates. The first thing to take note of is the top blue bar that includes the Act and the Commissioner and the Advisory Council. That is essentially the, the governance of the scheme. So the Act provides that legislative authorization and override that I discussed, discussed before and sets out what the appropriate safeguards are for sharing data safely. The Commissioner has a range of powers to make sure that those uh, safeguards are used effectively and that the, only the right uh, organisations are part of the scheme. And then the National Advised Data Advisory Council is a group of about 10 government and non-government data sharing and data use experts who provide the Commissioner with advice on how the scheme should be put into operation. There are three roles created by the scheme. The first is that of data custodians. Data custodians are all Australian government bodies with a small number of exclusions. Those exclusions are largely law enforcement and uh, national security bodies. So the Australian Federal Police and ASIO and um, parts of the Defence Department are excluded. So data held by those excluded agencies cannot be used or shared under the scheme. Accredited users is the second role created by the scheme. Any Australian government body with those exclusions, any state and territory government body and all Australian universities can become accredited users under the scheme. Australian university under the definition of the act is a university that is created by a Commonwealth state or territory piece of legislation and is registered as an Australian university on the TEXA list of 
organizations. Accredited users can obtain and use Australian government data under this scheme by making a data sharing request and putting in place a number of these safeguards. The third role is that of accredited data service providers. And this is a key role in the, uh, keeping the sharing of data safe because all eligible entities, with so same group as for accredited users, can apply to be accredited data service providers where they have sufficient technical expertise to do complex data integration. That is the integration of multiple data sets from multiple organizations, especially if there's uh, a lack of good metadata, uh, do de-identification services and or provide a secure data access service. So a, an online data lab that another organization can log into, for example. So an example of an organization that functions like an accredited data service provider is the Australian Bureau of Statistics or the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, where they have sufficient expertise to do the identification in a robust way, and then can provide access to the identified but unit level data through their data lab program, uh, where a researcher can log in essentially to a remote desktop access that data in a safe environment and needs approval to take that data out of the environment when once they've done their analysis. So we're expecting a number of other organizations to become accredited data service providers under the scheme. And um, there are definitely some expert areas within universities that we'd expect to see becoming ADSPs over the next year or so. The scheme safeguards, which is this U shape of boxes around the outside. I won't go into great detail on each one of these because we'd be here for hours. We've already spoken about the data sharing purposes and I've mentioned the, the term accreditation a couple of times now. When we say accreditation, there is an application process that an organization needs to go through to become an accredited user or an accredited data service provider. The uh, accreditation authority for government data users is the Minister for Finance um, and the National Data Commissioner is the accreditation authority for all other uh, accreditation applications. The application for becoming a user is relatively straightforward, but you do need to provide uh, quite a lot of information about how your organisation operates. And then the accreditation process for data service providers is significantly more complex given the level of detail that we need to assess, especially around things like IT security for those secure data access, secure access services. One of the safeguards is the data request system itself. So in order to make a data sharing request you do not have to be accredited to make that request, but data custodians only have to respond to requests from an accredited user. So if you, uh, as your organization, wishes to receive data, the best way to do that is to become accredited, make that data sharing request of a data custodian. There's no guarantee that they will meet that request, but they do have to provide reasons and when we say reasons, that is a, a formal administrative statement of reasons from the data custodian agency back to the accredited user if they're refusing the request. And that statement of reasons will need to say why they are refusing the request. And it can't be as simple of as this is too hard. It will need to go into more detail. Um, we, we do expect that custodians will have conversations with the requesters rather than just refusing. Um, so there may be a, an iterative process whereby the request gets refined so that the, the user and the custodian can get the data that they're actually looking for. The next safeguard is the data sharing principles, and these must be applied to all data sharing under the scheme. The principles were developed from the five safes framework that's used for controlling statistical release by the ABS and by the UK Statistics Office. Uh, and they apply controls on the project being why the data is being shared, the people who the data is being shared with, the settings being the IT environment that the data would be moving into, the data itself, including 
the sensitivity of that data uh, and the level of detail that it goes into, and then the output. So what is actually being generated by a data analysis, including are we generating a, a secondary data set? Are we just pulling out a report? Uh, are we looking to publish information on the internet? All those sorts of things are covered by the output principle. Obviously, we're talking about sharing sensitive information under this scheme. And in particular, there is the likelihood that personal information can be shared. It's important to note that this scheme does not override the Privacy Act. Uh, there are a number of privacy protections built into the scheme, including the minimization of sharing personal information, a blanket prohibition on re-identification, and prohibitions on the storage of data or access to personal information from outside of Australia. Uh, the simple way of thinking about the application of the Privacy Act here is that any data shared under the data scheme would be considered a new collection of data by the receiving agency in uh, considering the Privacy Act. There are some uh, exclusions around when consent needs to be uh, sought for the sharing of personal information. They're not easy to meet. Um, and there's a particular clause that says that simply there being a large number of uh, individuals in a data set isn't a good enough reason to not seek their consent. Uh, and I can talk about that in a bit more detail later on if need be. But when, if, if there's any ever a project that shares biometric data, so data that can be used to identify based on physical features, express consent is always required and there's no override available. I talked earlier about the complexity of data sharing agreements being a, a barrier to existing sharing and data sharing agreements do exist under this scheme. However, because the purposes, requests, principles, privacy protections, et cetera, will be the same set for every data sharing uh, project, those agreements will be much more streamlined. So when I say streamlined, I don't mean short, they're not a one page agreement because the uh, application of data sharing principles and things like that is uh, lengthy legal words, but they will be broadly the same legal words every time you do one of these agreements. So. We will have a, a bank of clauses that can be drawn on to create the data sharing agreement. And that will all be built into the data place platform, which I'll speak about in a moment. We talked briefly about data scheme transparency and reporting earlier. So there's a, a number of public registers that we'll keep on. Uh, so all data sharing agreements get registered publicly and there will be a public list of accredited users and accredited data service providers. And then of course the commissioner releases an annual report that talks about how the scheme's operating and who's participating. And finally, the commissioner has a complaints monitoring assessment investigation function uh, to make sure that the scheme is operating how we expect it to operate and that people aren't breaking the rules and the commissioner can issue directions and seek penalties if someone is doing the wrong thing. Finally, we're doing a couple of pieces of work to make this all as smooth as possible. The first is supporting agencies through our data discovery program uh, in developing data inventories. And we're also building an Australian government data catalog that will connect to existing tools like the uh, Australian government uh, digital atlas and data.gov.au so that there will be one place that's searchable for all public open data as well as uh, data sets that are available through the scheme. And finally, Data Place, which is our digital platform where scheme participants and others can manage data sharing requests. And it's also our administrative tool for the scheme. So all those app accreditation applications, et cetera, go through Data Place. So I've spoken a bit about why Data Place is a good thing, and I'm conscious that I'm nearly over my 20 minutes already, so I, I won't go through this in great detail. I think uh, most of you attending today have a very good understanding of why improved uh, in, and increased data sharing would be a good thing. So there's a, a series of benefits here that uh, the sort of party line on why data sharing is a good thing. The one for you to really Time, um, 
hang on to now is this accreditation for capability and safe sharing in order to make sure that data shared under the scheme is done safely we are limiting the participation in the scheme to those who become accredited and only a small number of Australian organisations can become accredited. So to be very clear, Australian government organisations, state and territory government organisations and Australian universities at the university level, not at a, a sub-organisation level, are the only organisations that be can become accredited. Uh, and it's a way of minimising the risk of unauthorised access or use and it ensures that we know who's participating, how they're participating, and how they intend to meet their obligations. I've spoken briefly about Data Place just before, and the, the thing to, to take away from today's session on Data Place is that if your organisation wants to participate in the scheme, the easiest way of doing that by far is to get the organisation on board to Data Place. Data place is not a formal requirement of the scheme at this stage. It may become that uh, later in its life, but at the moment, data place is a helpful tool through which we are doing accreditation applications. And we are also looking to get a large number of Commonwealth agencies on boarded as custodian agencies so that requests can be directly submitted to them through data place. DataPlace is also able to be used for making data sharing requests outside of the data scheme. So you do not need to be an accredited user to access DataPlace. Uh, and it is, it is potentially a useful thing for organisations to coordinate the requests that they're making and potentially streamline the way that data sharing agreements are being made for both data scheme, shared data and data that's being shared elsewhere. Uh, under other mechanisms. The discovery project is how we're uh, delivering these data inventories. We're looking at up to 20% of Australian government agencies by 2024. So that's about 45 agencies over the next couple of years. We're working with 14 as of the end of June, and we're looking at something like 25 by the end of this year. Um, each inventory is delivered using the same set of, of, of steps. So we understand the agency contact, context, engage with multiple data areas in that agency, agree some standards and processes, collect the assets, consolidate the inventory, uh, and present that inventory back to the agency with the end goal of the inventory then being available through the Australian Data Catalogue. This means that the catalogue will include a large number of entries for data that we know exists and we know who you should talk to to get to, but is not publicly available. So this is our, our little slide on how we're working with participants to get this scheme implemented. And obviously we're a long way through this slide now. We're sitting in the middle of August um, and the data scheme is well and truly open for business now. And over the past few months, I've been saying that from the 1st of August, universities will be able to apply to be accredited. That is all now true and live and ready to go. Um, we've also released a number of pieces of functionality on Data Place, and we're looking to open that functionality to make data sharing requests and come up with data sharing agreements in mid-October. We also have just uh, today, in fact, released our consultation paper on the data code, which is the code of practice for how the data sharing principles should be applied uh, and some guidance on privacy and data sharing agreements. So that's all on our website now. Also on our website is consultation on some ministerial rules, uh, including how uh, a set of existing organisations called accredited integrating authorities become accredited data service providers, uh, as well as how we keep a register of accredited data users useful to people. So conscious of time, I'm gonna talk quickly through user accreditation um, because this is something that 
if you want to participate in the scheme, your organisation must be accredited. I think I've covered off pretty much everything on the left-hand side there now uh, already. But the, the key takeaway here is that becoming accredited is sort of your driver's licence, but it is not a car. So when you're granted accreditation, you can participate in the scheme, but that doesn't guarantee any data being shared with you. The data can only be shared with an accredited user in accordance with a data sharing agreement following a request to a, to a custodian. Uh, there's a number of criteria for becoming an accredited entity. Um, and those include having good data management and governance policies, having appropriate qualified individuals in some leadership position to make sure that that's being done properly uh, and has some IT security controls um, to make sure that shared data isn't going to be available to absolutely everyone in the organisation and is unlikely to be lost. Uh, and also that the organisation has understands what skills it has and what capabilities it has and how those are managing the privacy, protection and appropriate use of data. So essentially you can think about accreditation as a first test of whether your organisation is able to meet the people and settings principles. Uh, so those being, can your organisation control who is able to access data inside the organisation from an IT and um, access control perspective? And does your organisation know who's working for it, what skills they have, and how to make sure that only the right people touch sensitive data if it's shared with you? There's a bit of a checklist here for becoming a accredited data user. Um, all of this information is available on our website and. Um, Felicity's promised to, to share this slide deck with all of you afterwards. But essentially, there are a number of steps you need to go through to become accredited, and not all of those are just checkboxes on a web form. You do actually need to have a pretty good understanding of how your organisation functions from a data governance perspective to ensure that you can demonstrate that you can meet these criteria. So things like reviewing your organization's experience in working with data and skills within the workforce, that's, that's not something that you can just say, yes, that exists. You, are, you will actually need to provide some evidence to say, here are the skills that we have, here's the experience that we've, used, we've, um, we've got, and here's how that would meet the intent of the accreditation system. We don't expect every accredited user to have already used government data or particularly sensitive data um, will take it on a case-by-case -case basis and we, we do expect that organisations who do a lot of data work currently will be able to provide some evidence that says this is how we work with it and these are the skills and capabilities that we have. It's also quite possible for the commissioner to accredit a user with some conditions so for example, if you work in a very small organization that has a, a number of highly skilled individuals but doesn't have a really secure IT environment, we might say you're entirely able to become an accredited data user, but you can't hold the data yourself. You're going to have to engage an accredited data service provider to give you access to that data on a more secure system. So there may be a, a small group somewhere who can only access shared data under the data scheme through something like the ABS's data lab. And that's the end of the presentation for now. I can see a couple of questions in the Q&A, but uh, if you've got uh, other questions after this, feel free to reach out to information at datacommissioner.gov.au and you can spell commissioner correctly, which we have failed to do on the slide. I apologize for that. I'll fix that before I send it around. Um, uh, there's also a contact us form on the website if you'd prefer to use that. And with that. That's fantastic. Thanks, Simon.